Hello, YouTube. This is Melantar VA. This is Sakia Amano. <laughs> and I'm Jose VA Paladin. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes. Yeah, guys, that's right. We got the Egg Paladin uh, himself for this review of Sonic Heroes. So first yeah. off... Yeah! Okay, so first off... Uh, Jose, the way we essentially uh, do the reviews, we, we essentially uh, talk about, like, each of the plot lines at a time. And we talk okay. about, like, the positives, the negatives, a few nitpicks. And and then we oh, we talk about the final story before we give our final thoughts. Okay, that's fair. It's understandable. I mean, I'm going to be going all out on Sonic Heroes because I got a lot to say. It's going to be absolutely intense. And I'm pretty sure the fan base is not going to be very happy about my thoughts. But hey, that's Sonic fan base in a nutshell. They're going to get triggered either way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like the Sonic fan base, you never know with them. Oh, yeah. Boom. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, um, anyway, I guess we should get started with Team Sonic. So, obviously, Team Sonic was. Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, and so, uh, and so, I guess, Jose, since you're the guest, why don't you essentially, I uh, say, like, uh, your opinions on the team, on the Team Sonic story? Oh, I would love to, man. Uh, thank you so much, Melantar VA. I would love to. All right, so my thoughts on Team Sonic. Well, in my personal opinion, I think Team Sonic racing is actually pretty cool. It's pretty normal and standard. Of course, you got Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles joining in the fray. So, I also really like the dynamic, you know, as how they were in Sonic the Hedgehog 1, 2, 3, and even Knuckles, no mean there, but... Although, Jose, so, Jose, Jose, I do have to bring up one tiny situation, one tiny thing. Okay. Uh, the Team Sonic's story actually brings up a situation that's actually been a problem for a long time. Shouldn't Knuckles be guarding the Master Emerald? What the fuck is he doing here? I have no freaking idea, but then again, this is Sega we're talking about, so they just flip flop the story from back to forth, so it's very confusing in my in my point of view. Okay then. Yeah, like, I, I'm not well, I'm not willing to disagree. <laughs> okay mm -hmm. then, Asakiya, what do you have to say about Team Sonic? And don't worry, we'll talk about your biggest nitpick in a minute. Yeah. Uh, so again, like what I think it was the Egg Palin was just saying about how like, uh, or no, I think it was you who were saying Melon Tart that basically the whole thing with Knuckles, it's like, well, and as, and as uh, the Egg Paladin was just saying, it's like, it feels like they took, an as took away an aspect of Knuckles' canon for the sake of having him in the plot, which was him guarding the Master Emerald. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, it felt like, it felt like it was done just for the sake of having Knuckles in Team Sonic. And it's like, usually when Knuckles joins Sonic and company, it's never too far away from the Master Emerald. Exactly. And furthermore, the Master Emerald Emerald really has nothing to do with the over overarching plot. So again, so what, why is he here? In there? Also you could have just you could just as easily have had another one of Sonic's friends join the fray. Mm -hmm. or, also or, or, yeah, or better oh, sorry for the interruption, but okay. I remember back I remember in this one scene from Sonic Three and Knuckles where in the ending they have like the Master Emerald drag and attached to the um, the Tails' is tornado. Mm -hmm. So why can he act just do it like that? I mean, sure, Angel Island will fall down to the ground, to the ocean, but they'll still protect the Master Emerald in hand and no one will get hurt. But that begs the question, where the hell was the tornado when it was, you know, running an autopilot after Tails and Knuckles flew out of it? Jose, have you seen that one Sonic short where it actually crashes into the ground? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who can forget that? Oh, Sonic <laughs> shorts. Oh, yeah, uh also, Sakia, would you like to absolutely discuss your one minor nitpick with this game? It's actually a bit of a major nitpick. Would you like to discuss that? My, ma my major nitpick of this game, and it's also something that was in another game we were discussing, I find a lot of the game's in-game banter annoying and kind of superfluous. Okay, what? Ba basically unnecessary. Essentially, oh, okay. essentially uh, Jose, everybody suffers from 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 a massive case of something I like to call shut the fuck up. <laughs> Pretty much, and it's like don't get me wrong, like a little bit of that for flavor is fine, but not every like ten seconds, especially some of that needless dialogue. Like, uh, like I think there's that one level where you're that like Metropolis, I think it's like level four or five, and they're like all bantering about how they like the side of the city. Level two, 
It's level two. Are you sure? That, I, I thought uh, wait, are you talking about like, are you talking about like Metropolis Zone from Sonic Heroes? Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, technically okay. level two. Wow. Are you sure? I thought the level. Sorry, I thought level two was like Ocean Palace. Yeah, that's I was, I was Ocean Palace. Uh, the way that I see it, essentially, there's like a two, two, two acts per level and then the boss like the old days okay so you mean like um two oh, levels so but they're combined into one zone yes okay i see what you're doing oh, i there. got you i got you so, so you're saying you're saying uh ocean palace is basically zone one act two <laughs> yes does that make any mm -hmm. sense yeah but, but it's like then again the sonic heroes also listed them according to stage number rather than act <laughs> uh, fair enough also guys can we absolutely absolutely say this I don't know how it happened, but I think Tails' voice got worse. Yeah, oh, that I can totally agree with. Agreed. The reason why, sorry. It's okay, Jose, what were you saying? Sakia, wait your turn. Uh, well, the thing is, is that believe it or not, Tails in Sonic Heroes was actually voiced by an actual kid. Again? This is the, that's the third time. Mm-hmm. Totally. That's the real issue right there. Oh my God. Thank God, like, after this, this grown Sorry, women this... were doing the role. Mm -hmm. I mean, this has been happening since the beginning of Sonic Adventure 1. Exactly, and we all all remember how bad the voice acting was for everybody there. No offense, Dean Bristow was not at at his best in that game either. Hmm. I mean, I would have to respectfully disagree. I mean, Dean Bristow have a little bit of energy. But yeah, I feel like it for Dean Bristow has a bit of a slight accent or something. But that's just my opinion. Okay then, Asaka, yeah, what were you going to say? Uh, pretty much the exact same thing that was pretty much already said. Mm -hmm. Okay then, um, also like, I think we should probably address the end ending ending of the Team Sonic story. Honest, honestly, like Sonic Adventure 1, it just feels very generic, like, woohoo, we won, let's get the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I will admit, it does feel a little bit generic, but I will lie, it has a little bit of a slight heartwarming scenario into it. Like, you know when Uncle says, come on, if you, you Tell were, me if you weren't was, scared. Was, yeah, if it wasn't for us, you would have had a chance. And Uncle said, I mean, Sonic said, you know what, you're right. Thanks, Knuckles, and you too, Tails. Tails. Like that. Hey, yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, uh, before this, aside from Tails, Sonic always kind of ran solo. So this mm -hmm. was a good bit, a bit of like a, a character growth. But then Amy had to come along and ruin the moment. And don't worry, guys, we will get to her. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Though, and, can I just say this? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, oh, can yeah. I just say one thing? Um, okay. I know we're still discussing on Team Sonic, but I want to mention something about like the writing. Well, I want we to were actually uh, about uh, about uh, to like move. Uh, oh, oh. oh over, over, uh, uh, to like a team dark, but absolutely, go ahead, say what you gotta say, we can wait. Yeah, that's cool, it's understandable. I mean, I was gonna wait until we mentioned like all the teams, so yeah, I'll wait it out, I'll wait it out, just keep on going. Okay, okay then, next, Sakuya, you're gonna, you're gonna like this, next, we're gonna talk about team dark. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> sorry, fangirling fan intensifies. Yeah, sorry, Jose, the two of us, uh, I'm a shadow fangirl, Sakia's a rouge fangirl, I'm sorry. Uh, no anyway, worries, yeah. I mean, I'm a sh no, no worries, I mean, I'm a huge Shadow the Hedgehog fan too. He's my Ooh. favorite Sonic character of all time. <laughs> but okay, yeah, uh, so basically, Team Dark comprising of Shadow the Hedgehog, Rouge the Bat, and E-123 Omega. Actually, it's which, E, which is, yeah, it is, sorry. Yeah, which is essentially the game's hard mode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like, honestly, to me, aside from a few levels, Team Dark wasn't that hard. Instead, another team down the line felt like a pain in the ass, but, but we will get to them in a True. bit. True, but it's like, I think the reason they're sure the hard mode is the fact that there's just like more enemies. Yeah, and not to mention, there's a bit more to the level design when it's, ex when it's extended for a longer period of time. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, we actually have to say something that I forgot about in Sonic Adventure 2. David okay. Humphrey is Shadow. I don't like it. Shadow should not sound slightly British. It's, it's like a yeah, like, no. a yeah, like a Japanese version. A Shadow uses a very 
polite dialect, but here's my question. With English, how the fuck do you translate polite but informal to Brit to slightly British? Yeah. I, have, I have no idea, honestly. Although I'm gonna be honest here, I'm gonna disagree with you guys on this. I mean, I personally do like David Humphrey as Shao the Hedgehog. I mean, it's a little awkward from here from time to time, and I will admit, but when it comes to the voice direction, David Humphrey kind of nailed it, in my opinion, especially in Sonic Adventure 2. Like, I understand the voice direction and the current voice direction we have now is currently different. Yeah, but... which we did talk about in the, in that collab we did on your channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the way, we should actually watch that collab video with me and Militar VA on my channel on why we think Sonic Lost World is either good or bad, but hey, that's a good promotional video, so yeah, back to this. Yeah, team. we'll watch that after this. Uh, I do gotta say, I actually watched that, you guys did a really good job on that. Job, job. Thank you, Sakya. Any, and anyway, mm -hmm. let's get back on topic. Anyway, um, basically... Let's uh... talk about Omega, the newcomer. Let's talk about him. Agreed. Because I, I have something to say to him as well. well Okay, Jose, since you've got something to say, you go first. Well, it's a bit of a smi minor thing, although it's kind of major. Uh -huh. Although, for, well, here's the thing. For some reason, in the, in the original cut scenes where Omega was mentioned, the reason why Omega was mad at Dr. Eggman was because Eggman locked him up in this room. And I'm going to be honest, that's kind of a bit of a terrible motivation to get revenge on Eggman. Here's what I, here's what I think I could have done better. Okay. It's kind of a bit of a head... It's kind of a bit of a headcanon of mine, but I'll try to be it quick so I don't want to waste any more time. Okay, go ahead. We're listening. Go right ahead. All right, so basically, here's how it goes. So the thing is, is that Dr. Eggman created Omega in order to actually unleash his battle fleet. So he was actually using him. So the Omega was actually using, was trying to commence target practice, and, Omega, and Dr. Eggman was very much impressed. So by the time he was praying for a next next area and try to let Omega rest, he stumbles into a room where he finds several of the E-series robots of Sonic Adventure 1. You know, E-101 Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, and Data. Oh, so, fuck, I see where you're going with this. I see exactly um, where you're going with this. Uh-huh. So basically, Omega has a plan in order to actually use them for combat, in order to actually revive them back to the way they were. And so Gamma was the first target, so Gamma Catcher used some electrical wires to bring it back to life. And then it worked. But then Gamma grabs Omega by his arm and actually transfers some of his data and his coding and memory banks from Sonic Adventure Omega. And then Wait this a thing... second. Didn't the Archie comics do something very similar? Well, yeah, but it's yeah, it feels somewhat similar, but it's done in a way where there's not any sort of electrical wires. I don't know how way it was processed, and I kind of forgot. Soul a transfer, bit. kind of a soul transfer thing. It was a weird, not very well explained. But let's move on. Yeah, I so yeah. That, yeah, I wasn't done with the whole Omega part. Okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. Oh. Continue. Yeah. So, anyways, like I said, so um, Gamma transferred all of his data and the and biocoding straight to Omega so that Omega has all of Gamma's memories that he actually that Gamma did from Sonic Adventure 1. And then right after Gamma was about to actually be on his feet, he soon dies again and is no longer functional. This caused Omega to be angry and sad, filled with grief that he wants to actually to revenge Dr. Eggman by shooting him down, but was soon taken down by Neo Metal Sonic. You know, but because this takes place prior to the event of Sonic Heroes, and that's where Neo Metal Sonic wanted to, you know, betray Dr. Eggman and be all rebellious. And thus, he was locked away by Neo Metal Sonic. I, I work for it with Dr. Eggman, but, and thus, that's the whole scenario with Team Dark and how Omega became angry at Eggman. Fair enough, Jose, but like, if you think about it, it's possible that, that Omega was like, pissed off, most likely because he felt, he felt like Eggman was essentially wasting his powerful potential. I don't know. It could have been it could have been explained better, but yeah. Yeah. yeah that's like... Also, there is one other element of the plot we do ha we can't we kind of have to bring up even though even though Granted Rock Saki and I are going to talk about it tomorrow, Shadow's amnesia. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're going to talk about that tomorrow when we discuss Shadow the Hedgehog, but uh, yeah, that is something we absolutely had to simply discuss. Also, Sakia, I don't know if you, like, noticed, but, like, Lonnie Manella got better in this game. Oh, yeah, like, she definitely emotes a lot better, but it's, like, I feel like she still didn't do as good of a job as, like, some of her future, Rouge's future voice actresses did. 
mainly mm -hmm. Karen, but again, we will get to Karen. Uh, though, to be honest, I feel like she was a step above Kathleen. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and we will talk about Kathleen when we get to <laughs> because 06. At, at least Lonnie made Rouge sound like an 18-year-old girl. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm That is true. And plus, the fun fact, Lonnie Manella, um, the current voice, uh, the voice of Rouge, you know, for Sonic Adventure 2, mm -hmm. also, was the voice, also was the voice director. But I think you guys may have noticed this. Wait, what? You didn't know? Lonnie Manella was not just the voice actor of Rouge, she was also the voice director from Sonic Adventure 2. That, that explains a lot, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you guys know about the YouTuber Cooper's Castell? You know about this, Melon Tart. Yeah, like, so some of, like, a Co a Cooper's things, but, like, I mainly uh, know that the guy absolutely hates Pontac and Graf. Yeah, I'm aware, but yeah, that's where I actually found out that he was actually the voice director from Sonic Adventure 2, which explains a lot. So yeah, we have voice director who was in character, and it was decent, very good. And I gotta give credit to her. I just wish that she would could be, she could come back, but hey, that's how Sega's rules and how they function. It's kind of confusing to me, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Which, by the way, speaking of the cast, there is there 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 is actually a slight elephant in the room that we do have to address. Mm -hmm. This Sonic Battle and Sonic Advance 3 were sadly Dean Bristow's final games before he passed away in 2005. Yeah, that is very depressing because yeah. unfortunately, he unfortunately suffered from a heart attack and even Mike Pollock, the current voice of Dr. Eggman, can confirm it. Yeah, which is actually sad, which actually, ironically, the Japanese voice actor a voice actor died literally 10 years later to the date. Yeah, that's actually very surprising, honestly. Wait, on the same day in 2015? Yes, the same exact day. I don't know, but this is actually, uh, this is kind of very surprisingly. I, is there like some type of prophecy that should be known about this? Because I'm about to pull my pants. <laughs> uh, 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 Let's move on. Are, are, are the deaths foretold in the scrolls? I have no idea. Let's move on, shall we? How, how about we actually go to like the ending, the ending of the Team Dark stories? It's really, we spend a lot of time on these guys. Okay, but wait, wait, I also want to mention one more thing about Ruth the Bat. What's that? Her outfit. Oh god, yeah. Yeah. Oh uh -huh. yeah, l like last time we, uh, we actually made a statement not to sexualize Rouge. Sega, this is not helping. No, it's like, <laughs> no, no, it's like that, that, that outfit was just way too sexualized. <laughs> uh huh. Especially with the close up you see of her in the beginning where it's like, you literally get a face full of her boobs. <laughs> yeah, seriously, I, that's like packing in so much titties underneath the camera. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it's like, is it just me or did, or did she have like bigger boobs than she does like canonically in that game? <laughs> well, I don't the know. Outfit, but uh, she looks like a dominatrix in that outfit. Yeah, she does. Yeah, it does, it does feel a little bit weird, but if this is how Sega acts in Japan, I don't really want to know. But then again, Japan has done a lot of weird, funny stuff in the past. I was going to say... Pico. Uh, <laughs> Oh God, no! I'm uh, sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I was making a comparison of the weird shit they've done. Uh, I was I was gonna say I could name a few other equally messed up anime, but I don't think we have the time for that. Yeah, let's yeah. move on. Like a weirdly like, there's one line Shadow says in the intro that bothers me. He says, and I quote, "Some things never change, do they?" That's like, wait a minute. Do you suddenly uh, remember? Because, like, Shadow the Hedgehog says that he still doesn't remember anything. So, really, where did this line come from? Was this a translation error? I don't understand. Yeah, and wasn't he supposed to have technically died after falling from the Ark? I have no idea. And to be, uh, as for the Ark thing, I would see, apparently, um, I want, I don't want to spoil this for the whole Shadow the Hedgehog thing because I want to save that. You want me to spoil it, or...? Eh, go ahead. We actually all, yeah. all already recorded the shadow review because we were so yeah. bored. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. So basically, in Shadow the Hedgehog, nearly in Shadow the Hedgehog, I'm sorry, when you were fighting eight minutes during the boss fight with Devil Doom, Dr. A Man contacts Shadow and saying, Shadow is the exact same one that he fell off of Sonic Adventure 2. And which Dr. We did Eggman, mention, which by the way, you, oh, uh, sorry, Jose, but like, I absolutely have to say this. 
ha okay. have to say this. Who, who drags out a final boss fight that long for that information? That is bullshit. That is stupid. Yeah, it's I like, know that. He, he, it's like that could have been done in the middle of the fight when you were like just three quarters of 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 the way through the boss's health. That would have worked perfectly. But anyway, back on topic, Jose, continue with what you were saying. Okay, so basically, uh, in the original, uh, in the boss fight with Double Doom, let's say eight minutes, which again is bullshit. Basically, Doctor Eggman, uh, Doctor Eggman contacts Shadow and then actually says, "Shadow, remember earlier when I said I created you?" It was all a lie. I, but I rescued you with one of my robots. You lost your memory, that's all. Everyone th thought you died ever since that horrible incident. But I rescued you with one of my robots. You lost your memory, that's all. You are indeed the original creation my grandfather created. Okay. And, th I, I, and that's yeah. another oh. thing. How did Shadow lose his memory to begin with? That's, yeah. that's never explained. My only guess is that maybe ever since he fall down the adrenaline of the earth, he actually messed around with his memory, and since he is a creation of Joe Robotnik with those green blood and certain black alien, who shall remain nameless, um, I, th <laughs> uh, I think I think that's kind of the sole reason why his body isn't like fully as, you know, 100% stable at that point, but that's just me. Fair enough. And, and, that would make sense. Yeah, that's fair. And, 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 Anyway, and next up is the game's easy mode, Team Rose. First off, and big, what the fuck are you doing here? Nobody and likes that, you. And the I mean, I like big. To be oh, honest, yeah. though, to be honest though, it, 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 the, the one of the reasons I hate big is also just the fact that it's like, I feel like his voice actor was a complete waste of a voice actor, AKA the voice of Duke Nukem. Yep. Anyway. <laughs> And and be honest, like, uh, this was actually the first, like, vocal, vocal cream debut. Like, uh, uh, she actually uh, debuted in, like, Sonic Advanced 2, but she didn't have a voice back then. Here, she actually had a voice. Mm-hmm. That's true. I mean, unless you count Sonic X the anime, but since it's not canon to the games, aside from the adaptations, I'm willing to incline that Sonic Heroes is her first acting role. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Which came first, this or Sonic X? I would say, I would say like possibly Sonic X because, well, if you actually look at some of the dates, apparently, well, uh, if I can just find it somewhere on here, the first episode released back in, back in April 6, 2003, but in Sonic Heroes' case, the episode actually, the Sonic Heroes game, for some reason, I think it actually released like um, December 30th, 2003. Okay, fair enough. So it looks like the anime did come first. But, so the anime yeah, was a debut. Like I, yeah, but like I said before, um, I think it's like the Japanese date. I'm not really sure because, you know, the Japanese date did come first before four kids decided to come in and butcher it. But, yeah, yeah. we'll talk about that another day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like we should actually talk about like the plot because once again, Amy's being a level 12 Yandere stalker. Mm -hmm. It's like, Amy, what happened to you? You used to be such a precious, too pure for this world hedgehog. Oh yeah, that's uh, right. Before this, I actually, sh I, I actually, sh I, I actually sh showed Sakuya Sonic Mania Adventures, which included the holiday special where Amy was just too pure for the world. Yeah, but then again, that actually came out like somewhere of um, 2018, I believe. I can't remember the date. 2016, I think. Either yeah. way. Yeah, but e yeah, but either way, um, the thing is that that's actually like a different characterization of the character. But back then, it was actually kind of different, you know. Yeah, that's true. Also, granted, back then, Amy, Amy was essentially the stereotypical, a typical girl before a, a certain green character came out and ruined that stereotypical girl motif, but I already talked about her, so I won't discuss it and, here. And, and to be honest, back in the day, Amy also had a different name. <laughs> oh yeah, like Rosie the Rascal? Yeah, but like, let's get back on topic, really. So, yeah, so on Amy Rose's part, on my side, I will admit, I'm mixed when it comes to her character in Sonic Heroes because I remember when Fiji said, Sonic, there's no way out of marrying me. Like, what the hell, Amy? Are you trying to be a serial masochist? 
Also, Jose, think about this. Amy is 12. Sonic is thir Sonic is 15. I'm pretty sure somewhere that is illegal. Uh, yeah, but then again, a lot of people have these crazy debates in social media, so I'm not really going to get into that. Yeah, All let's I'm not. Yeah, exactly. So I would say that I feel like Amy was mixed for me. I really do like how she tried to cheer up the gang, you know, Cream and Big to find Chicola and Froggy in the first cutscene they were in. It was okay. Um, she had a good moment, although I will admit she had some moments that felt very intolerable. Which, by the way, is speaking of like a, ch a chocola, outside of the IDW comics and this game, we never saw that character again. Where did he go? Yeah, well, yeah, it's like... Oh, sorry, sorry, but more importantly, where did Sokola even come from? I mean, you can make the argument that she may have come, he may have came out from the child garden or anything else, but it wasn't explained or anything. Exactly, and Sakuya, what, what were you going to say? Because, yeah, I was going to say, like, after any of those appearances, the only real companion you see with cream is, cha is cheese. Exactly. Which is her default, you know, companion. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much, which, if you think about it, compared to, like, Sonic Advance 2, Cream was kind of, uh, part, I don't know if this is the right word, but she was neutered, I'd say. Yeah. Wait, like, neutered in Sonic Advance 2? No, like, Sonic Heroes, like, I, I don't know. Like, uh, uh, Sonic Heroes, she was literally OP with the help of Cheese, but in Sonic Heroes, they took that away from her. Oh, yeah. I mean, I will admit, he plays solo without Big and che and Big and Cream. I, I mean, with Amy and Big. Yeah, I will admit, it feels somewhat newer and a little watered down when she plays solo. It feels a little weird. And that strange pose she did where she tries to point at the enemy feels way too delayed, in my opinion. Yeah, sadly. Yeah. Uh, which, by the way, speaking of that, let's actually talk about the graphics. Everyone is way too shiny. Yes. Mm hmm. Not to mention. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. And also just not to mention how awkward the facial features look on the models. Yeah, da, 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 da. That's literally how yeah. everyone looks. Yeah, I mean, I won't lie. I mean, the Indian cutscenes felt extremely weird and way too short. Like, I will admit, some of the gra some of the CGI, police CGI cutscenes look pretty cool, but the pre cut cutscenes just, Jesus Christ, what the balls they're even thinking about. I mean, it looks okay if you're into, like, the whole graphical design look of it, but... Yeah, I'm still mixed when it comes to it, and it's still very flawed. I think Sega is making Sonic Team feel very lazy. Yeah, sadly, that is true. And I guess now we should actually talk about uh, the, like, oh, and, ending. Uh, uh, sorry, Sakuya, yeah, uh, I'll let you say your bit. Yeah, and like I said, it's, it, it's, in the, it's when you get to the in-game graphics that, like, the features on the models look weird. Mm-hmm. Not to mention, some of them don't even have mouths. Yeah. Oh yeah, plus like, the controls, I'm sorry, but like, looking back, the controls, some of them are way too slippery. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna have to disagree with you guys. I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean, I understand your opinion, but I actually don't mind it. Sure, it's still be from time to time, unless you actually play through the game a long amount of times. It depends on how you actually go through with it, you know? Fair enough, so any, so, uh, 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 so like, anyway, let's like, talk about the ending, which actually makes a bit of a funny callback to Sonic Adventure with Metal Sonic essentially essentially, essentially mentioning the chaos data since... Yeah, um, hold on, sorry. I also want to mention one more thing about Big. What's up? Um, I will admit that while having Big the Cat feels somewhat strange, I know you like to like him, but I will admit Big the Cat is actually a much more bigger powerhouse than he was in Sonic Adventure 1, and I actually give a, I give a big positive to that. He's a very strong powerhouse throwing Cream and Cheat, Cream, Amy, and Cheese into the mix. And I won't mind, his attacks are actually very ruthless. Sure, some people are mixed about it, but I actually don't mind about it. And also, we never actually got a chance to talk about this, the Team Blast. Oh my god. Yes. Oh, my god. oh yeah, that's right. We, we, we've actually been ignoring all, all of the Team Blast. That's right. So should we make this a quick short for each character before we get to Team Chaotix? Yeah, let's, let's make it a really quick. Starting with like a Team Sonic, they officially bring a uh, bring back the light attack, which I do appreciate. Mhm. Mm 
Yeah, and I will admit, whenever they activate the, um, the team blast attack for Sonic, they actually like have Knuckles throw on Tails and Sonic around and Tails kicks them, causing like a massive whiplash of attacks going Sonic very, very fast. Oh yeah, which again, ig ignites the light attack, which we actually haven't seen since Sonic Adventure 2. Also, in addition to that, when um, whenever you actually see like the Team Blast gauge try to recharge itself, you can still attack enemies with Team Blast by uh, pressing the B button with Sonic, which causes him to actually at uh, the B button with the GameCube or whichever control you have, like the Xbox or PS2, which we'll get back to that later. But yeah, but yeah, it, you have like Sonic actually have like a horror enemies that haven't been killed with Team Blast and the Team Blast is charging. You can actually jump and press the attack button and Sonic will just quickly whiplash and tax them very, very quickly, which is actually very effective. Mm -hmm. And and of course, for the Team Dark Team Blast, we of course get the return of Chaos Control. Ooh, oh ooh, yeah. Ooh, ooh. Do it. So, which actually, uh, Rouge doesn't really do anything in that team blast. She, well, she literally she... just sits there flapping, uh, 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 flapping well, te te uh, well, like Omega blasts everybody once well, Shadow's te frozen well, te time. Actually, technically Rouge holds up Omega while Omega aims and shoots. But did Omega really need to be held up? I, I mean, mean, I mean, it's the I, mean I mean, maybe to avoid Omega from hitting Shadow. <laughs> Okay, that's mm -hmm. fair. Like in the crossfire? <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. Not, yeah, not to mention to that, when the team blast is charging, they actually stop time. Exactly, which I think is a nice touch. And finally... Oh, yeah. Team Rose is like... I don't get it. I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, they, 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 they bunch up into a something like a selfie-like thing, and then you see flowers all over the place. <laughs> exactly, like, what did they even do? Did they drop a bunch of LSD? Ew. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe. I don't know, but they all have some real drug deals. But, okay, not illegal. But anyways, in all seriousness, I feel like it's a... The way how it looks, it feels like a bit of um Japanese type of cultural thing. You know, we have like the umbrella and the poses doing like a festival. And when... And all those flowers are blooming around causes damage. Like, I don't really know too much, but... I think to me, it feels like a bit of a method to actually destroy their enemies and also have their hearts and their strength be maxed up to level three and have invincibility for a short amount of time and amount of shield. Like I said, it's in rows, it's the easy mode. Uh, I, I mean, maybe you could maybe see it's like a meta comment about the power of friendship. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Like anyway, now that. And. Anyway, mm -hmm. I, I guess now that we're finished with Team Rose, it's time to move on to the big pain in the ass. Wait, you never got to mention the Team Rose ending. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I'm sorry. Let's go back to that. Essentially, yeah. uh, 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 the story essentially ends ends with like Amy chasing Sonic. Whoop de do. Mhm. Mm yeah, yeah. Sorry, like. I person I personally believe that T Team Rose's ending is possibly the most boring. And in my opinion, probably probably one of the worst. Yeah, the only small touch to it is that Neo Mill Sonic said Chow Data. Chaos Data. Been, uh, Chaos Data has been copied. copied. Which yeah. if you actually uh, look back at like a, a Sonic Adventure, Froggy actually swallowed a little bit of like chaos, so therefore some nice continuity. Yeah, which is why I gotta say I really do like the writing in Sonic Heroes. Okay then, that's Team Rose, and now, as I was saying, it's time for uh, for, uh, for for what I personally believe is the biggest pain in the ass: Team Chaotix. Woo, Team Chaotix! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chaotix. Oh, boy. oh boy, we got a fanboy. SPO, yeah. you know our policy. We never turn down work that pays. Yeah, you mm. know our policy. Charmy, what the fuck are you even doing here? You are six years old. Hey, don't you dare try to disrespect my young boy, Charmy. He's a nice kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, oh my God. It's a shame I really can't do a feminine voice well, or I'd uh, try to I'd try to voice his, voice his veil. 
Yeah. But anyway, comments. anyway, like uh, to me, like Team Chaotix levels were just. Why did these? Why do stages like this? Why? So basically, Team Chaotix stages are mainly focused on missions. Not, and I'm not talking about like missions like get to the goal ring. I'm talking about like actual missions like try to find the chow or light these flame candles or even try to collect many rings. Or, 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 or possibly the worst of these missions, clear the area without be being detected. I'm sorry, I thought I was playing Sonic, not fucking Metal Gear. Or it's like Cooper, when you think about it. Exactly, like, or, uh, this is Sonic. Or, 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 or Splinter Cell. But seriously, Wait, uh, yeah. who, who thought putting stealth into a Sonic game was a good idea? I don't that, care completely... if Espio is a chameleon. It it's like that's completely counterintuitive. It's counterintuitive. Sonic. Exactly. Mm. Jose, yeah. your thoughts on that? Well, yeah, I'm a little mixed. Missions. I will admit some of them were actually easy and simple for me to do, to do. I don't really mind collecting rings or trying to find inside of chows or whatever. Although, I will admit there were some that actually did aggravate me. Like, of course, like you said, the stealth missions were annoying. And that freaking level, I had to, br I had to burn off all the torches. Period. Oh, God. Which, by the way, speaking of that, do we need to mention the hard versions of the Team Chaotix levels? You mean the team? Are you, oh God! You mean the hard versions for each character, especially for the team chaotic? Oh yeah, like all the others, perfectly serviceable. They are doable. For the chaotic, it's like how how do you possibly expect for somebody to get an A rank in these? It's impossible. Yeah, seriously. <sighs> uh, I have no uh, I mean, idea. I mean, I imagine getting an A ranking in a couple of them before, but. Uh, it's, it, it, I don't know. I mean, it depends on the person's personal taste and they're a completionist, but I doubt any person who's a completionist is willing to keep up with that type of shit. And, and it's just not, and it's not worth, and the promises aren't worth the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Plus, like, I'm sorry, Jose, but like, since we're actually on the subject of the Chaotix, we should probably talk about where these guys came from. It's actually kind of a funny story that's now commonplace. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, is that basically Vector, Espio, and Charming, this is not their first appearance in a Sonic game. Their very first appearance, believe it or not, was actually in a Sega 32X game called Knuckles Chaotix. What's a 32X? Well, audience, I'm glad you asked. It was actually this weird little add-on, add-on, which sadly did not sell very well, and as such, Knuckles Chaotix ultimately fell into obscurity. Not commonly anyway, got... known outside of hard, oh. no, besides besides the hardcore fans. And actually, the general purpose of the 32X was to basically try to keep up with stuff like the N64 and the PS1. And it's yeah. Genesis relevant. Yeah, not to mention you also have to purchase an extra Genesis with the 32X in order to actually fully complete it. Yeah. So that's a so that's a huge scam and a waste of money. Yeah, but like, uh, thankfully, all three of these guys were 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 actually technically rebooted and 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 like repurposed for the modern games and given much more of a personality, which I do appreciate. SBO is my personal favorite. Mhm. Mm I like SBO too. Charmy on the uh, Charmy, I'm mixed when it comes to him. He's useful in future installments to some degree. And Vector, I actually do like Vector. I mean, I do like his voice considering since you know. He's the leader of the Chaotix, and no one gets it that way from me. But... <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, but too bad Vector's become a bit of a walking meme thanks to poor kids. Find the computer room! I mean, with with Vector, I like him as a character, but I don't like his voice. Oh, yeah, yeah like, a, a, a really, like, Keith Silverstein's, like, the best iteration of Vector, I think. You mean the current voice of Vector, right? Yes, 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 that guy. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. let's move on, shall we? Also, I sorry, I also wanted to mention this. Um, mm -hmm. I, Vector, Vector's voice is voiced by Mark Biagi, and yeah, his voice is actually for Vector is actually pretty okay. Though there were some moments in the scenes where he actually tones down the voice. Like I remember the one scene in the, when they bow with Team Rose, where it says, "Excuse me, Miss." I'm wondering if I could ask you something. If it's about a date, it'll have to wait. 
Stage? What, you use a junkie little brat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that. Which yeah, actually... Gonna... Which actually... Uh, speaking of, like, that, I personally... Uh, that's Sorry? like a very a sonic adventure a way of like crossing s stories and because like uh, uh, for the uh, for the team uh, team rose 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 side uh, these guys kind of seem like jerks however from the team chaotic side they're simply trying to finish a mission yeah exactly so what's up with that rude remark coming from team rose yeah well, unfortunately, <laughs> it, it's all about perspective. Yeah, but there's always two sides of the story. Also, by the way, another fun fact. Yes. Mark, Biag Mark Biagi, the voice of Vector from Sonic Heroes, you also You mean SBO? No, no, no. Mark, uh, Mark Biagi, the guy who voiced Vector. Vector. All right. All right, what about him? Yeah. Be uh, Mark Biagi not only voiced Vector, but he also voiced Professor Joe Robotnik in Sonic Adventure 2. You're shitting me. I'm not joking. Look it up. It's an actual fact. You're you're serious. Hang on a I'm, second. Hang on a second. I'm gonna look I'm, this up. I, I, you guys I'm keep serious. talking. I'm gonna look this up. Give me a minute. I'm I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking on the on Wikipedia. Seriously, it says here Mark B, Mark Biagi. Jose, 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 Jose. You do know that Wikipedia isn't exactly a reliable source. Well, um, I'm not talking like the week, actual Wikipedia. I'm talking like the official Sonic News Network, if you know what I mean. Oh, 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 so, oh the, oh, the uh, Sonic official Wiki. Sonic Wiki. Yeah, yeah, the Sonic Wiki. Uh, 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 oh, give me a oh, second. Yeah, I'm actually fandom. checking behind the voice actors. Give me a second. I'm checking behind the voice actors. That's my reliable uh, source. Uh, I Holy said, shit! Uh, yeah. He was not kidding. Mhm. Mm Jailed Robotnik and give me a minute. The page is loading and back to the crocodile. I'll be damned. Mm -hmm. Well done, Mark Biagi. Yeah. Uh-huh. This guy did a very good job voicing the, the beautiful professor himself. Yeah, I was going to say, the man's got some range, for sure. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. So, like, any, anyway, let's talk about Team Chaotix ending, which is actually the most interesting ending, I think, since it effectively uh, reveals that Egg Eggman essentially possibly never sent that message to Team Sonic. It's possible he never sent that message, or he did, and it was really a call for help. We still don't hmm. know. That would make sense. Or, or maybe, like, uh, Neo Metal Sonic had sent it to kind of, like, kind of a trap. Exactly. Yeah, that's a pretty uh, bad thing. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the same with that mysterious voice that hired the Chaotix. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, like... It, it, Oh yeah, like it, that mysterious voice. It turns out it was Doctor Eggman the whole time, disguising his voice, right? Dun, dun, dun. Oh, oh yeah, like which, by the way, I I don't know if if like a Dean's voice was like filtered for that, but if it wasn't, good job, sir. You have my respect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and Although I, although I will admit, um, the voice, uh, the tone of voice from the, the mysterious person on the microphone that was Dr. Eggman, mm -hmm. I will, there were some hints to it clean that was Dr. Eggman. You know what Vector says? That, mu um, that mustache moron. And then that she got offended, and the guy got offended to it, the guy in the mic. We all know that was going to be Eggman, so, but some didn't. I sure. didn't. Have yeah, but that's how it was. Yep. Though, uh, uh, though I gotta say, that was actually the one campaign I don't think I ever actually finished. It's not worth it. Trust me, it, it's not worth it. Anyway, because, uh, to be honest, I, I actually rage quit at the stealth segment. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. I understand, I understand that, yeah, I understand it's not worth it, but the thing is, if you want to complete Sonic Heroes or at least finish the story, you're gonna have to finish it at one point because it's gonna hire a very secret secret that's gonna be revealed when you for story. Which, by the way, now that we're actually finished to, uh, with all four of the main stories, before we get to the final story, there is one thing we gotta talk about, and it's the one thing that makes replaying this game not worth it. The Which is? The special stages. Ugh. 
You told me to kill myself because I don't need the time. Let me get my gun real quick. I don't know. Jose, no. No. I can't. No. I can't. Jose, I can't. It's like a go, uh, go break a window instead of killing yourself. <laughs> yeah, Jose, oh. let's calm down. No, no. Uh, the two of us will talk about this. This, uh, You go <laughs> relax. We'll talk about this. We'll let you know when we're done, okay? Fine. But make sure. But I got something to say that I want to get off my chest before this all ends. Say it now before you go calm down. Say it now. Yeah. Okay. I'll say this right here, right now. The special stages, in my personal opinion, are absolutely one of the worst stages I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, you can just say whatever you want about Sonic 1 stage, Sonic 2 stage, or any other stages from our previous Sonic games. This, in my opinion, is one of the worst special stages I've ever seen in my entire life. Sure, it's not perfect and does have its limits, but still, the way how it is is that you need to go through a tunnel and try to actually keep rep repeating, repeating to press the action button in order to, and to, and to in order to finish this final stage, or at least try to end with the chaos symbol. And let me just say this right now: it is beyond frustrating. It's so frustrating that obviously it makes my balls drop, and not in a good way, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jose, thank you. Thank you, Jose. But, now, please, go, go, go. Calm down. The two of us will take this discussion just, from just, here. Okay, but there's one more thing I want to say. What? If you guys, if you ever want to get all the Chaos symbols, get them with Team Rose, because their stages are much more shorter, and you need to protect yourself from any sort of enemies. They're much more easier. They have the key protector in their hand, and they will to get their stage, stages much more easier. Gee, thanks, Johnny. Huh. You're welcome, my lady. Any, <laughs> anyway, dude, go calm down. We'll let you know when we're done talking about this, okay? Fine. I'll try to watch myself for. I'll fine. I'll try to read some read some rules that bad magazines. I wonder how very interesting stuff you're gonna be revealing in those magazines. <laughs> <laughs> wait, she's eighteen. Wait, she's eighteen, correct? Yes, she is. Yeah, she is. I do it. I do it. Legal. Finally, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, like Jose said, the special stages are just not worth it. They're terrible. They suck. Oh yeah, plus like a combined oh with like the aforementioned super slippy controls, it makes gathering the cha the chaos animals more of a pain in the ass than they need to be. And sadly, you need you need the seven chaos animals in order to access the final story. Yeah, and, and yeah, and unfortunately, those special stages are just a straight up slog, even if you're playing as Team Rose. Oh yeah, Jose, we're done. All right, good, perfect. Wait, oh man, I want to read my next issue of Rules of Bad Magazines. Jeez, how can she do that with her legs? Later, Jose. I mean... Later. Uh, fine, whatever. <laughs> so, what's next? The final story. Okay, let's let's wrap this up, shall we? Absolutely. Well, let's wrap this up like an absolute boss. <laughs> yep. Okay, it's so like, uh, first of all, Metal Sonic's transformation, it's longer than the Sonic 06 load screens. And believe me, that's saying a lot. Yeah. That I can totally agree with. Oh, yeah, like, uh, some call me Johnny actually timed it out. I was about to say the same thing. Seriously, more than 40 seconds? Oh, Jeez. yeah. Oh, oh yeah, which, oh, 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 oh yeah, by the way, with the super forms, Tails and Knuckles have established super forms. Why didn't they fucking use them? Uh, I have no idea. My only, my, well, I do remember that, uh, according to Takashi Zuka, they said that the reason why Tails and Knuckles had, like, these transformations was because mainly of the Super Emeralds instead of the Chaos Emeralds. And I know they were gonna say, what about Sonic Mania? You only need Sonic Chaos Emeralds to do that. Look, state of continuity for Sonic is fucked. I can't answer that question. And... <laughs> yeah, and the next thing is that while well, I admit the Chaos Emeralds in a Sonic Team Knuckles, you know, the Super Emeralds, yeah. gave them Super Transformations, I think I can somewhat understand why they didn't actually bring it back. I mean, I still think they could bring, like, the Super Emeralds and give Tails the Knuckles and Tails transformations, like how Shadow and Sonic did it back in Sonic Adventure 2. But there is one small problem with that, Jose. If they brought back the Super Emeralds, they'd have to bring back Hyper Sonic. And sadly, af after the big Pokemon, a shock of, like, I want to say, say, I want to say that was 
96 or 97, they can't risk that again. Oh, right. I know what you're talking about. Right. I mean, you can just try to limit it, limit it if you can. Like, don't just show like a little bit of flashy, you know, colors into the mix. Just begin into the main color that many fans associate with, like white and well, good or, to go. Yeah, or, or, or like pink for hyper knuckles. <laughs> yeah, I think it's super knuckles, but uh, yeah, it's debatable. Yeah, but yeah. like at the same time, I I do understand why hypersonic hasn't been brought back. I do get it. I still don't get it, but whatever. Seizures, dude. Do you want to cause seizures on an international scale again? I re remember my argument earlier when I told you stick to only one color only and make that hyper. Okay, fair enough. So anyway, oh yeah, by the way, Crush 40, uh, Crush 40's song during the final boss is once again awesome. Yes. It, it, if there's one thing Modern Sonic has almost always done right, it's the end boss theme. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Plus, oh, yeah. Like, we'll actually uh, uh, talk more about these as we uh, uh, continue. Mm -hmm. So why don't we go to uh, Metal Madness boss fights? Because this ought to be good. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, for me, like, the first time I kept dying over and over on the Chaotix and Team Dark areas. I don't know about you guys. Well, I I was able to die these small amount of times, but that's because I was I before I actually got Sonic Heroes, I actually kind of spoiled myself and already watched the final boss because yeah, I never got the game because I'm a poor little turd sack. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so but yeah, I think is I wasn't really new to Sonic. I mean, I do remember Sonic back then, but when I was my childhood, but. Back then, back then, when Sonic Heroes was released, I never had a GameCube or any Xbox or PS2. So, yeah, I had to see a lot of videos about that, which kind of entertained me. So, yeah, I think I had no sense of issues there, although I will admit there were some cheap moments to the mix. Mm -hmm. Sakuya, what about you? Now, granted, I don't think I really have a right to speak and then ever actually finish the game. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. So you can't really talk about this. But anyway, uh, for me, like, uh, 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 the biggest bullshit bullshit moments were, were actually the missiles where where essentially Metal Sonic captures a, 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 a your teammates and and like if like all all three of them get caught you die I hated that mm -hmm. tell me, tell tell me I'm not the only one please the tail attack you mean no the one with the bubbles where red Oh, yeah, when he launches the missiles and then all the crystals form into a trapping shield when it gets your character. Huh? Yes, that one. Tell, tell, tell me, please tell me that attack pissed you off too. Please tell me that. I mean, I guess I can agree it is very aggravating. And so, yeah, that is kind of a stupid way just to actually trap the opponents out there. But then again, I would say when it comes to Melisonic's standpoint, that's kind of a bit of a smart way to take care of your enemies. Though, yeah, it is kind of a bit unfair at some point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which, also, like, one, once, once, fuck, I can't talk. Once you finish, finish that, essentially, a three-phase fight, it's on to the big guns. Metal Overlord, which again, Devil Doom had a cooler design. But that's my opinion. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I would say the Metal Overlord is kind of a bit of the positing second ground for trying to let us, you know, deal with all that horse crap we did with the earlier teams. So, yeah, I would say this is a very good step up to it. You know, having Super Sonic as well as Super Tail and Super Knuckles. Also, by the way, I just looked this up on the internet. What's up? Apparently, Apparently, for some reason, when Knuckles and Tails have, like, the shield, apparently that indicates that that is their super form. Which bullshit. Make... I, I, yeah, I agree with that, too. That's so bullshit. Uh-huh. So if this like, like their modern version, I will not deal with that stuff. Plus, we already have shields in the capsule item boxes, so what's the excuse here? Exactly. Plus, like, Super Shadow and Super Silver stay otherwise. Mm -hmm. But anyway, like, if there's like one thing up, 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 up about the boss fight that honestly 
ir irritated me. Like, I get it, but at the same time, I think it's kind of dumb. You can only damage Metal Sonic with the Team Blast. And, of course, it only takes five of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a bit of a step up challenge in order to actually try to increase them, you know, the team blast gauge, which I understand how it functions. I mean, it depends on the pattern on how you're going to attack metal. Like, for example, if Metal Sonic is in the middle and throws crystals, use Sonic. If he goes to the left and he throws all those thorns at you, use Tails. And if he goes over to the right, throwing a giant freaking battleship, mind you, use Knuckles. Which, again, I, I get it, but at the same time, it's like... Who designs a boss fight this way? Hmm. I have no idea, but I think this is kind of a bit like in a spiritual sense to me. Like, it's always to combine your powers together into one strong attack being down Metal Overlord. And I can understand the point of that because, well, you're striving very, very hard and you all came this far as friends, as a team, as Sonic heroes. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but anyways, yeah, it's kind of a way that no matter how strong the enemy is, you have to fight back together as a team in your form to fight a greater, e a greater evil equally, no matter what it takes. Holy shit, uh, uh, this review's been act actually last last a long time. Let's wrap this up. Okay, because I want to throw a little bit of fun facts and a little bit of positive to the mix. Okay, fair enough. Uh, the game actually actually has a bit of a satisfying ending, even if granted, I still have one question. Mm -hmm. We know for sure that eventually Eggman does get Metal Sonic back. Where, where exactly did Shadow and Omega take Metal Sonic for like all that time before Eggman got him back? I don't know. That just feels like a stupid question, but it's a question that needs to be asked. Hmm, I don't really know to be honest, but then again, it, then again, this is a bit of a kid-friendly story, you know, it's lighthearted and stuff, so not a lot of questions are going to be answered. Yeah, I mean, that's not... true. Uh, plus, on the bright side, after this, we did get my ultimate guilty pleasure, and it's a game that got me through high school. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so yeah, so about the um, games that me, I would say, yeah, that's a pretty cool heartwarming. Speaking of which, I want to talk about the writing in this game. Okay, you know, oh, so okay, the... let's uh, uh, talk about that uh, really quickly because, like, we uh, we literally been at this for almost an hour. Yeah, yeah, that's how it is. Okay, go ahead. Well, still, it's definitely been a good time. Yeah, that's how it is. All right, so basically, the writer for Sonic Heroes is actually a man known as Shiro Mikawa, who, by the way, also wrote previous Sonic stories, such as Sonic Adventure 2, um, Sonic and the Black Knight. Some of the other wait Sonic a minute, wait a minute. This guy would later write Sonic and the Black Knight. Yes, he did. Oh, Oh my god, no wonder that story was so good. To it me. was good. It, yeah, he, yeah, he also wrote Sonic Adventure 2 and so many other Sonic X, and shockingly, he was also responsible for writing Sonic 06. You're shitting me. I'm not joking. Oh my god, dude, how do you fall that far? I mean... I mean, it was a little bit interesting, the story was, but yeah, it wasn't fully executed. Plus, you can blame Sega for trying to make all these unnecessary cha many making all these unnecessary decisions when the game was in development. Jeez. Oh, so, and, oh and don't worry, we will when we get to that. Yeah, so like I said before, Shiro Mikawa did a very good job in writing the story. I will admit there were some questionable premises, like with the whole shadow clones and everything else, but yeah, we'll get to that stuff later on. But I would say Jose, it's right now. Jose, we just... Jose, uh, Jose, I'm curious. Who is the adaptive writer for the English version? Can you find that out? Um, I have no idea, actually. All I know is that Shumi Kawa was the one responsible for the writing of the game. And I'm not sure who was the translator of this game. It depends. But you know how it is. It's fluxed. So I can't really tell ever since we started this whole scenario. So, yeah, that's true. So anyway, I think... I, I think it. Uh, final thoughts time since we are since we have been at this for a long time. Let's go into our final thoughts. 
Uh, yeah, sorry. I also want to throw a Nerf Punk back and okay. again. Okay, okay, one more. Okay, sorry for delay, but this is gonna shock you guys. What's up? So, apparently, originally, there were supposed to be actually four teams. Believe oh, yeah, or not, Johnny mentioned this. There were gonna be like six, I think, and Shadow was not gonna be part of it. Oh, yeah, exactly. I'm looking at it right here. You see, it turns out there were literally going to be 18 playable characters. This included, but not limited to, Team Sonic, which is Sonic, Knuckles, and... So, I mean, Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. Of course. Rose, it, Rose with Amy, Cream, and surprisingly, Rouge. Hang on a minute. What? Hold on, hold on. Let me continue on. Before, uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and talk. Sakuya, you're the Rouge fan girl. What do you have to say? Uh, 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 sorry. Sakuya, are you having a stroke over there? I mean, he's, fa he's fanboying around. Uh, she, Jose. She, Jose. She. All right, she, sorry. Okay, let, let's continue. Who else? Uh, oh, okay. I was gonna say, if any, it explains the outfit. Yeah. Like the design of the outfit of Rouge. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right, so anyway, like I said before, and as for the other characters that were supposed to be present, this is of course included Espio, Charmy, and Vector. We already got that one. Okay. But these last three are kind of weird. Okay. This this parry involves Chaos, E102 Gamma, and Big the Cat. Oh fuck no. Oh fuck yes, I'm reading this. And uh -huh. And the next two, the other last two ones are surprisingly very classic. And this included Bang, Bean, and Bark. Okay, that Park. I would have seen. That, that I would have liked yeah. to see. Yeah, that yeah. would be very interesting. And the last one? The last one, this one doesn't make any sense, but it included Metal Sonic and Ray and Mighty. Okay, no. First of all, Metal Sonic. Tails doll and Mecha Knuckles would have made more sense, I think. What is Metal Sonic doing with Mighty and Ray? That doesn't make sense. No. I don't know, but that'll be a very interesting dynamic for, to see if this if this actually went through. But thankfully, Shiro Mikawa decided the writer decided to actually not include it, and that was a good part on his behalf. Yeah, that's true. So anyway, final thoughts time. Yep. The game needs polish. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and to be honest, I feel like they should have done something kind of like Bubsy did with the Willy Strike Back, where it's like they gave the option to like adjust how much commentary you heard in game. Yeah, that would have been nice. Jose, what, yeah. are, what are your final thoughts? Honestly, I actually love Sonic Heroes. I mean, sure, it's not perfect and it does have some problems, but I didn't mind the gameplay or the story. It was kid friendly and lighthearted. I did like the writer that they actually chosen for this. And while I admit there were some very mixed opportunities when it comes level design and everything else, I personally do like it. Hell, in my unpopular opinion, I think that the level design, in my opinion, is the best in the Sonic series. Yes. Okay. And Sonic Adventure 2 and anything else. Okay, that's fair. So, uh, so, that, so, uh, so essentially, overall, overall, I say, if you're a Sonic fan, fan, try it. But, but at the same time, don't expect too much. Okay, guys, join us next time. Where essentially both Sakia and I look at the game Shadow the Hedgehog. Once again, thank you, Jose, for joining us for this and taking time out of your busy schedule working for Dr. Eggman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries, Amber. I really appreciate you having me here. And also, to all you fans out there that actually like Sonic Heroes, be sure to actually get on Nintendo GameCube. Don't get on Xbox or actually PlayStation 2 because those games suck. I mean, if you guys want to, it's your opinion. But hey, like I said, get on GameCube. <laughs> but yeah, but anyways, like I said, so if you guys actually want to check out any of my stuff, please feel free to actually go to my channel at the Egg Paladin. I make like lots of video discussions about video games and stuff. So, and if you guys want to check out the video with me and Amber, please go check out the video Sonic Lost World, Good or Bad. That's actually pretty funny. I totally recommend giving it a watch. Both of which I'll actually link in the description. Anyway, guys, I'm Melantar VA. I'm Lucky Amano. And I'm the Egg Paladin. And we'll see all of you tomorrow when we cover Shadow the Hedge.